Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this session of the Wow Factor Business Podcast with me, your host, Linda Knox. This is the podcast that is designed with the beginning entrepreneur in mind. And if you're just getting started in your entrepreneurial journey, this is the place to be. I'm here to try to help you in your journey, that acronym HELP, H-E-L-P, to offer words of hope, words to enlighten, words to get you to launch, and words to get you to persevere. Well, in today's session, this is a, a flashback, actually, or a rewind of session number nine. I did a session some time ago entitled In Pursuit of Purpose. I really got um, quite a bit, uh, a lot of f- positive feedback, actually, in this session. And I think it's because, I don't know, I, I, a lot of people get frustrated and, I don't know, they feel overwhelmed when um, they're getting, st- especially, well, you can get overwhelmed even if you've been <laughs> doing business for a while, but especially if you're just getting started. And so um, I think personally that's probably why I got a lot of feedback. So I try to share with you some of the reasons why I think we tend to get frustrated um, I had uh, several obstacles of my own that I listed in uh, session number nine and things that frustrated me. And I I shared those frustrations and obstacles. And I also um, tried to talk about how I overcome them. So everybody has their own story and their own testimony. But um, I really do think that these tidbits will uh, help you to want to get up and try again if you've quit or you're thinking about quitting and just encourage you to keep on keeping on. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this rewind of session number nine entitled In Pursuit of Purpose. Enjoy. Well, this session, this is geared towards uh, motivating you to stay the course and to continue to pursue your passion. I'm giving uh, the title of this session In Pursuit of Purpose. When I say In Pursuit of Purpose, I don't mean really trying to find your purpose, but rather um, now that you already know what your purpose is, how do you pursue it? And if you think of the term pursue, when you're pursuing something, you're chasing it or tracking it down. If maybe uh, somebody when they're dating and they're pursuing somebody, you constantly pursue them, you woo them, you do whatever you have to do to, to track them down until you um, capture them, whatever, I mean, whatever it is you want to pursue. So when you find out your purpose, a lot of times you're pretty energetic and you're excited about it and you're pursuing it with all vigor, but sometimes you can get a little worn down. So how do you stay the course and um, keep the cause for your purpose ever before you until it really comes into fruition and until it flourishes? I do believe that we um, are all created for a specific purpose. Um... And somebody out there may even have um, several main things that they think that they're called and gifted to do in life. Let's say, for example, oh, you feel that you've been called to be a medical doctor, but also called to serve in foreign missions. So not everybody who's considered a medical doctor or wants to be a medical doctor is called to be in the foreign missions or to work um, overseas. To me, I would consider that to be two types of... um, distinct purposes. But I I do believe that everybody is called to do something. Everybody has uh, gifts, talents, skills, and abilities, and and passions, something that they were just born to do. Some people discover their gifts and abilities early in life. Other people discover their gifts and what they were called to do later in life, and some much, 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 much (laughs) later in life. Doesn't mean that it's any less important, you find a lot of people who've discovered their gifts later in life, and they've done more in their last few years of life than they than somebody would have if they had discovered their gift early in, earlier on in life. I uh, know that everybody has their own story or testimony as to when that light bulb turned on and they had that aha moment once they knew what they were put on this earth to do. Some people even think that, well, they don't have a a true purpose or a true call in life because what they really like doing may seem minor or minute in the eyes of somebody else. But really nothing can be further from the truth because we're um, not all called to do the same thing. And what might be considered small in your eyes is large to somebody else. Whatever it is you have 
uh, somebody else really does need. We all really need each other. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, it talks about the different members of the body. Of course, here they're talking about the church, about the foot needing the hand, the hand needing the foot. Well, that's true anywhere you look. I mean, we all need each other. I was reading an article um, about the, uh, the pinky toe. You hear a lot of people say, what use is the, the small toe? On this article, it says it might be the smallest of the five digits, but uh, it's very important if you want to try to walk, to jog, or to stand. You know, I'm sure you can walk, jog, or stand without it, but they say that it is really a, still a very important member. So no gift, no talent, no skill or ability is too minute or too small. If you've been given that gift or talent, you were given to a, given it for a reason, and you know we all somebody needs what it, whatever it is that you have. A few clues to discovering your gift. If you're a little muddled and you're trying to figure out, uh, I'm really not too sure. Everybody talks about gifts, talents, skills, and abilities. I'm not sure what I was uh, called on this earth to do. Well, two things that I, I kind of look at as clues are what is it that you really like doing? And then number two, um, what is it that you're good at doing? These can be some hints and some clues. So uh, what is it that you really love doing? For me, it, it didn't take me long to discover what I think I was called to do. I mean, at the time when I first saw signs or knew that I was, uh, I really liked doing certain things, I'm not even sure I wanted, I knew that it was a could have been considered a gift or a, a calling in life because I was so young. I was my first memory was when I was in high school, and um, I took um, some uh, communications courses. Courses, and you know, we worked with a lot of camera equipment and um, various other things that had to do with communications, the, the, uh, public speaking, and journalism, and that type of thing. So I uh, later on followed a good friend of mine to Ohio University. And my good friend of mine and college roommate for two years. Shout out to my friend Lynn. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? (laughs) Anyway, I followed her out there. And I still really didn't know at the time that that school was considered a good school for communication. Talk about all things working together for good. But long story short. That did become my major, and um, I just kept growing from there and learning from there. And I think I knew at the time that's something that I really like doing and would like to, to do in life. I bet we've uh, probably all heard pe- this said before. What is it that you would do, uh, you love doing it so much that you would do it for free? I've heard a lot of people say this. I've heard people say also that they can't believe that they're getting paid to do something that uh, they would do for free because they love it so well. So sit back and think. You know, if you're still kind of wondering what is it that you think you might be called to do, what is it that you really like doing? What is it that you think that, man, if I could, you know, I would even do this if I could do it for free. That could be one of the things and one of the clues to kind of get you to understand or to know what it is you might be called to do, what your purpose is in life. Okay, and number two is doing what you're good at. So that could be another clue in discovering your purpose. You know, what is it that you're good, you're good at doing? You know, um, I enjoy watching cooking shows on television and on uh, internet sites like YouTube. I love uh, that show, Chopped. You ever watch Chopped on the cooking channel or How to Beat Bobby Flay or The Iron Chef? And it simply amazes me uh, to know that there are people out there in that world who, who, first of all, really love cooking and that are good at that craft. I didn't know that you could uh, you could be so skilled in cooking. Um, I watch what they do, and I think to myself, boy, I wish I could do that. Um, yeah, unfortunately for me, I'm not a fantastic cook. Uh, I got a few specialties and a couple of things that I can do well. Uh, you guys out there know what I mean. Those dishes that somebody uh, will ask you to bring to a special gathering, and they'll tell you, you know, just bring that one or two dishes cause, <laughs> because that's the only thing they'll ever eat that you make. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not that bad. Um, 
they may ask me to bring three or four dishes, but that's it. Now, I'm not a, a professional at that, but I like watching um, the cooking shows. So, uh, okay, uh, what if I did this then? What if I um, combined the two? Uh, what if I videotaped and became the, uh, the person who videotaped somebody who was uh, uh, cooking on their uh, YouTube channel or had their own show? And vice versa, maybe somebody who's good at cooking aren't really too good with um, taping or, or doing video editing and that type of thing. So the point here is, you know, what is it that um, you are good at doing? Um, some people just have natural born <laughs> abilities, uh, natural what I call God-given abilities. They can do stuff and it just seems to be so easy, easily done. I could attempt it and do it and maybe even do it well, but I'd have to struggle at it. But these people, uh-uh, you know, just come so easy. I love the uh, Christian uh, jazz artist called Ben Tankard. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him before. Phenomenal jazz artist. Uh, I heard him give his testimony once, and he talks about how he was at an older age, and by older, he wasn't a grade school kid, or I don't even think he was a teenager. He was, you know, I don't know, maybe in his early 20s. I'd have to go revisit the story, but he was older, and... Um, he just sat down at the piano once and started playing. No lessons, no years of, of practicing or playing. He just started playing. Now, to me, that's a God-given gift and talent. And uh, if you could hear him now, for those of you who may not have ever heard him, go go on Spotify or something like that and, and listen to his music. It's just, just phenomenal. But that's a God-given gift. Now, I can sing a little bit. Uh, sing in the shower, sing background, I call myself the doo girl, <laughs> sing in a congregation, but I am not a professional singer, and I cannot, uh, you wouldn't want me to record something and <laughs> try to sell it to somebody. Um, I know people who, who sing very well. My sister, I believe, sings very well. That's her gift, but I, that's just not me. So, you know, what are you good at doing? I don't think we ever arrive. Let me say that uh, if you have, even if you have a natural gift, you're constantly working to perfect it and to hone it and to learn and to, so you you never so perfect that you just can't continue to to um, hone your craft. But if you know in your gut that you have a gift, um, that helps you to, and it should help you to continue to pursuing it to hang in there with it and you shouldn't let anybody discourage you if you know that you have a, a particular talent everybody's not going to want to use your gift at that time or use you or whatever and I and I get that I understand uh, for whatever reasons don't take it personally but if you know that you have a gift just keep working at it and and um till you're put in a position in a place where you can use it I know um I I uh over the years have watched uh, American Idol and it amazes me to see people who worked hard all their well I won't say all their lives but for a long time and they sing and they sing fairly well they get before three people just three people <laughs> and all because those three people didn't give them that magic what is it that gold ticket to go on to the next round they burst out of the room in tears and we'll say things like, oh, my singing career's over, my life's over, uh, because they didn't, I'm not going to New York or wherever they send them. That's nonsense. <laughs> I listen to that, and I can't believe what I'm hearing. Really? Three people who you just met, who heard you sing for what? All of two or three minutes? Because they tell you you're not going on to, to the next round, now it's you're done? I mean, if you have a true gift and passion, if you're good at it, you like doing it, continue to pursue your passion. Now, the flip side <laughs> the flip side of that is this. Somebody told those folks they could sing it, <laughs> and they can't hold a note in an in ocean, okay? Uh, we've all seen that, too. Um, you can encourage people, but don't lead people down a 
the wrong path. Some of those people you and I both know had no business on that show. And somebody needs to be honest with them and say, hey, this <laughs> this is probably not uh, your lane. Stay in your lane. This is not your thing. But my point being is, if you are good at what you do, you like what you're doing, these could be um, signs as to what your uh, gifts, talents, skills, and ability, and purpose is in life. And once you hone in on it, you should continue to pursue that. Okay, so what, like I said earlier, this isn't so much going to be a podcast session that talks about uh, how, how to find your purpose, but, you know, after you um, know your purpose, um, how do you con- continue to pr- pursue it and to stay on track? Uh, several things um, can get in my way, personally, of me wanting to continue to pursue uh, my goals and, and purpose and passion in life. There are a couple obstacles. There are more uh, than these four that I'm going to mention, but there are four that kind of stick out to me. Number one is time. Number two is lack of enthusiasm. Number three, lack of funds. And number four, lack of support. So let's take a look at number the number my number one obstacle anyway, time. So no time, little time, poor time management. I don't care what you want to call it. I never seem to have enough time (laughs) to do anything that I really want and need to do. And it's especially nerve wracking when you know exactly what you need to be doing. And we don't have any shortage of ideas, but just no time to implement them. Maybe it'd be different if I'm just... It's just blank. But I mean, I've got a, a, a treasure trove, uh, binders, <laughs> notebook full of, notebooks full of ideas and things. And I, 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 I've actually got a plan, believe it or not. But um, it's difficult sometimes to, um, to find the time to do everything that you know that you want and need to do. And I can guarantee you that I'm not the only person out there that feels the same way. I love this quote by H. Jackson Brown. Don't say that you don't have enough time. You have exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller, Pesto, Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson, and Albert Einstein. I said that I love this quote, but unfortunately, Mr. Brown did not break it down as to how I'm supposed to do and to create like these great people and still have enough time to do it. Okay, so I know that we all have 24 hours a day, but will somebody please tell me how to how to make it so that I can produce and make significant strides with the time that I do have? Now, I can't say, though, that... Uh, There's just one thing that I did implement several years ago, um, and when I work at it, it works. I came up with the acronym MOVE, which stands for Minutes of Visionary Energy. I know that if nothing else, no matter how busy my day gets, I can always take a few minutes to complete a task or a goal. So the first of my minutes... And anybody's minutes should be, of course, to uh, set up your your um, your goals. What are your tasks? Do you have a plan? Take a few minutes to get that plan and and to make those goals and to set out how you plan on implementing your plan. If you um need to read a book, take a few minutes today and read a, a page or two, or a chapter, or listen to it on audiobook. No matter what you have to do, take a few minutes out of your day to complete it. When I think in terms of minutes um, as opposed to days to complete something, somehow it doesn't seem quite so taxing. Um, Here's another nice quote by uh, Creighton Abrams, which says, How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time sure we've probably all heard that quote. Well, it's true, you know. One small bite out of your day 
every day, every other day, you'd be surprised at what you can do. So my number two obstacle here is lack of enthusiasm. So, uh, hey, I don't know about you, but sometimes I do lose interest and passion uh, towards moving towards my purpose and pursuing my purpose. You know how it is when you first discover something really nice. You're uh, very zealous. You uh, have a lot of energy. You're, in, you're energetic and enthusiast, enthusiastic about it. But then over time, you can kind of lose steam and interest. I don't know why that is, but just over time, sometimes this happens to us. Um, you feel like singing that song by B.B. King, The Thrill is Gone. Um, so what do you do, you know, when you try to, to get that passion back, passion back? Again, I don't know why this happens, but we just just lose a lot of the enthusiasm. Well, one of the reasons could be, and I and here again, this is just my own thoughts and I, as I try to think about um, why I get drained, is um, I think sometimes for me, I just get physically exhausted and worn out. Not getting the proper rest can affect you, how you feel, how your body feels, and not only your body, but your emotions and your uh, mental state. I find that if I don't get the proper rest and sleep, then I really don't feel like doing much of anything the next day. And along with rest and sleep comes having the proper diet and exercise. And this is a major problem of mine personally and something that I've got to constantly work on and at. When I incorporate the, the move minutes of visionary energy principle, uh, what I'll do is, let's say I'll, I'll set my, my Fitbit and say, okay, I'm going to go on a couple minute walk, a few minutes. I'm just going to walk for a few minutes. Well, before I know it, I look up and a whole hour has gone by. So that tends to help. When you're thinking diet and exercise, well, the exercise part, I'm still working on the diet here. <laughs> gotta, gotta, uh, figure out how I could do that with, with, um, and be better at that. But that really does help if you get your rest, if you exercise, if you eat right, whatever you are drinking or putting in your, into your body can, can help your mental state and can help me focus. And when I can focus and think right, I am more energetic, energetic about the, the tasks that I have before me. Another reason that I think that I might lose enthusiasm is because I don't keep uh, refreshed and I, I'm not up to date about the things pertaining to my purpose. For example, I love podcasting and listening to other podcasters really helps me to stay excited about podcasting. I also like to look at tutorials and to read books centered on and around the various things that are pertaining to my purpose. So these types of things help me to, to stay abreast on what's going on and it, it, it excites me and reminds me of what I'm doing and what I'm in, in this for. You know, so how about revisiting your goals and plans that you've made and hopefully you've drafted some kind of plan. In session number uh, 002 on setting up a business, I talked a little bit about drafting a brief business plan. Nothing brief, uh, lengthy or elaborate, but just something that will give you a snapshot of the type of strategies that you're trying to implement. So maybe you should, uh, if you do have a, a plan of some type, go back and revisit that and, and re, uh, read that. And if you don't have a business plan or a small draft, go back and listen to session 002 and, and try to put something together. And this could really, I think, help to ignite um, your fire there. All right, so for my number three, uh, third obstacle is lack of funds. Lack of money. <laughs> and this is a pretty uh, big obstacle that can get in uh, my way when pursuing um, my purpose. Especially when you're first getting started. Um, you may experience a pretty low cash flow. There are times when we all need a little more money than we have on hand to pursue our, our passion. Some people, that's not a problem, but for others, especially if you're just getting started, that could be a, a, a problem. Uh, more times than not, when we're just getting started out, 
we are operating on what I like to call a shoestring budget. But you'd be surprised at all the things you could do with a shoestring budget. I'm amazed when I hear some of these people out there say that they're operating on a a, a $1,000 a day budget for Facebook ads and things like that. Uh, well, guess what? You really don't have to have a thousand dollars a day to throw at an ad. Although it would be nice <laughs> if you did have that kind of money, but uh, some people are growing with a lot of success, and they're growing their audience org- organically through YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and, and other places. Do your research and find out um, how to grow organically. You don't have to have tons and tons of money in that arena. You don't have to uh, have thousands of dollars to throw into uh, digital or electronic equipment like cameras and computers and things like that. You can produce uh, pretty nice pictures and video with your cell phone. Maybe if you don't have a cell phone, borrow a friend or a family member's camera or something like that. I could go on and on about all the many ways that you could uh, uh, budget and have a shoestring budget mentality and be able to do everything that you need to do just starting with whatever it is that you already have on hand. Um, One day maybe I'll do a, (laughs) a podcast entitled Shoestring Budget. I don't know. One of the most inspiring stories that I've ever heard is the story about Chris Gardner. Some of you might not know his name, but you've maybe seen the movie called In Pursuit of Happiness. The role of this character in this movie was played by Will Smith and his real-life son, uh, Jaden. In the story, Mr. Gardner faced divorce, unemployment, raising a young child on his own, a single father, was homeless, and yet he still continued to pursue his purpose until he finally made it. He continued to pursue until he thought, until he made it. Through all of his struggles and through all of his trials, you know, when I, and we all have our, pity parties in our moments when we sit down and think, eh, this is just too much. If you get to feeling like that, if you feel that way, uh, I challenge you to, to revisit the movie, purchase the book, go to the library and get the book, and read his story. If that doesn't encourage you, um, then I don't know what will. That That's a true story of perseverance, um, no matter what the obstacles And everybody has their own story. I'm sure you have your story. But uh, I'm just telling you and letting you know that, hey, stay enthused, stay excited. Find those things that help you to stay enthused and to um, be excited about what you're doing. And stay the course. All right, my fourth obstacle is lack of support. Uh, If you're a creative Uh, and or an entrepreneur or somebody like that, people can sometimes think that you're a little crazy. (laughs) Well, maybe they don't think you're crazy, but (laughs) uh, creatives and entrepreneur types are always dreaming and envisioning new ideas and drafting new plans. It's hard to explain it, but uh, it's just a part of our DNA. It's it's, it's how we are. I talked earlier about uh, gifts and talents and, and, and things that you just that are just innate and born in you. Well, I didn't realize too much later in life that, that some people are actually gifted and wired for this. And unless you understand it, and especially those people that know you understand it, that, hey, that's just how they're wired and, how, and that's what's in their DNA, they can look at you like you're, a little, like you're a little crazy. You know, again, no matter what you want to call them, entrepreneurs, creatives, uh, It's just in their DNA. In an article written by Jeff Goins, he writes this about creatives, and I quote, A creative is an artist, not just a painter or a musician or a writer. She is someone who sees the world a little little differently than others. A creative is an individual. He is unique, someone who doesn't quite fit into any box. Some think of creatives as iconoclast, 
Others see them as rebels. Both are quite apt. A creative is a thought leader. He influences people not necessarily through personality, but through his innate gifts and talents. A creative creates art, not to make a buck, but to make a difference. She writes to write, not to be noticed or to sell books. She sings to sing, just for pure pure joy of making music. And she paints to paint, and so on. A creative colors outside the lines, on purpose. In so doing, she shows the world a whole new picture they never would have otherwise seen. A creative breaks the rules, and as a result, he sets a new standard to follow. So I like how it, uh, he says here in this quote, uh, breaks the rules, doesn't quite fit into the box. You know, they do things that are, can be a little, little strange and, and, and may not make sense. And I would just like to um, add a point here of my own um, when I think about creatives, that they are always creating and dreaming. Let me repeat that, always creating and dreaming. It's, again, how they're, they're wired. But unfortunately, here, the uh, continual dreaming can be misunderstood. Uh, you know, you, for those of you that are, are creatives <laughs> or entrepreneurs or whatever, you know how it is when you keep coming up with these ideas. I, I was listening to one podcast, and a guy called himself a serial entrepreneur. And honest to goodness, he, I mean, I thought I was bad. OMG, this guy. <laughs> He in a in a single year, I think he must have had five or six different ideas, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm I'm not that bad. <laughs> I'm not that bad after all. Um, but how can I? I never knew until later on in life that yeah, this is just how some people are actually wired. So um, those of you who are the same way, you know what I mean. You know that look that you get when you tell somebody <laughs> that you know that you have this great idea and they give you that look as if to say, Oh no, here they come again. Now what is he or she up to now? What are they? Here comes that dreamer. (laughs) You know, we, you all know what I'm talking about, but you know, it's hard for them to understand that again, this is how you're wired. Uh, Don't get me wrong. I believe that we all have dreams. I think that everybody has dreams and visions otherwise you know where would you get your purpose in life so we all are wired to do something but for some of us we have uh, an excess of dreaming and are continually building and 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 have new ideas Um, so I say all of this to say that um, we shouldn't get frustrated uh, when others don't chime in with the same type of enthusiasm that we get when we tell them about our new venture. You know, don't take it as a sign of a lack of support. Um, I believe that most people really do support us. At least I pray that they do. But their uh, passion may not uh, be the same as yours as it pertains to what is, you know, to what it is that you're doing. Especially if it's the umpteenth time that they are hearing about another one of your dreams. (laughs) So... Uh, Just don't take it as a lack of support. But it can be discouraging um, because you would like to have some type of feedback, any type of feedback. Uh, It's better than no feedback at all. Good feedback or even constructive criticism. When you don't hear anything, uh, this can be, uh, again, misinterpreted as having a lack of support doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case, but you would like to hear some feedback every now and then. I mean, can you imagine an architect working hard on uh, their plans and finally building a a grand building and nobody, not even the people that uh, they built it for, said anything about it? If you work, if uh, the work was subpar or if it was uh, great, you just would like to hear something, anything at all. You know, I've heard this played out time and time again. So cheer up. Uh, You're not by yourself (laughs) for all you creatives out there. Uh, But really, I really don't think that it's as bad as you think. I think that we all live in a very noisy world, especially in the world of online and digital technology. 
Everybody is trying to get in front of us for something, trying to get us to read something or to watch some type of video. Hey, I also get tired of all the noise and the clutter. Sometimes I think that if I see just one more advertisement or invite to a webinar, I will scream. So I know, I know this sounds kind of crazy (laughs) coming from somebody who loves to market and promote ideas. I'm just trying to get uh, you to look at the bigger, bigger picture here. There really is a lot of noise and clutter out there. And we can't take it personally if people, especially the people that you're trying to reach uh, online, don't seem to uh, be interested. Don't look at that as a lack of support. To me, the key to get people's attention is to first have good content and information and service uh, that they will need um, and want. Let me repeat that. (laughs) Have the type of information that they would need and want. And second, to target your audience. So not only do you have to have uh, good content, but you got to know where your audience is at to put it before the people who need what you have. You have to go to where the people are and where they're hanging out. You might have, oh, let's say 2,000 friends and followers combined on all your social channels. But that really doesn't mean anything. I mean, if if you have 2,000 people, but if they don't need what you... um what you're offering, uh, why bother? It's, it's, it, that, that makes no sense. I think it's important for uh, us creatives to recognize that not everybody relates to what you're saying or needs what you have. Why should anybody who hates boating subscribe to a boating podcast show? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Just because somebody knows you doesn't mean that they um, have to share all of your posts or to retweet everything that you have. Let's forget that the social media platform is primarily there for people to get together and hang out with their friends and family, to laugh and to find out what's going on in their lives, not to be inundated with tons of marketing and all of that stuff. And again, I know it sounds strange coming from me, who is a marketer, but I do understand the platform. Um, So again, when I read good content, I try to engage in to encourage the presenter, whether I know them or not. And let me reiterate, you know, if it's something that I need or I like. I might even join their uh, email list or one of their Facebook groups. So, yeah, it would be nice. It would be really nice to hear an encouraging word every now and then from a friend or family member. But uh, remember, if you don't hear anything, don't take it personally. So I would challenge you here to uh, put the shoe on the other foot and ask yourself, I mean, honestly, how engaged are you or have you been when someone you know posts an article or an ad asking for your feedback or trying to get you to engage on their site? Do you engage? Do you respond all of the time? Hmm. Think about it. (laughs) Think about it. My sister is my biggest cheerleader. She's always encouraging me with a text or a post or by uh, sharing a post. I really do appreciate and love the support from her and everyone who's shown me uh, support and trying to encourage me on my journey. But at the same time, I really do understand everything that I post and everything I share is not going to resonate with everybody. Although... If you're listening to this podcast and you know me, (laughs) share away, engage away. Did you hear me? Retweet this, okay? (laughs) So here, let me repeat. If we're honest, I think that we all miss the mark. We all don't engage or give uh, good feedback or constructive criticism like we should, myself included. So don't take it personally. Don't uh, take this as a sign of of lack of uh, support. Hey, in case you haven't heard, there are uh, over 2 billion users on Facebook. That's right, billions with a B. And I'm certain out of those 2 billion users, both you and I can find the people who need the value that we have to offer them. Let me repeat, who need the value and good content that we have to offer them. 
I love the testimony of another young man by the name of Christopher Johnson. I saw this young man first on an episode of a Shark Tank. He was trying to make a pitch for his invention called the Rapid Roman Noodle Cooker. All of you past and present college people know about ramen noodles. You'll have to uh, read his story somewhere online to see how his Shark Tank venture uh, played out. But later on, I heard him on a podcast, and I can remember him talking about how he would uh, present his cooker to various of the big box office, I mean, I'm sorry, the big box stores, and they'd say no to him. And he would come back to his team and, and say, hey, you know, person uh, didn't really say no. What they meant to say was not now. So every time he would hear a no and he would pitch and he would hear a no and he would pitch, he would always come back to his team and say, "Uh uh-uh, they just meant not now. Well, long story short, once his cooker began to soar and get a lot of notoriety, sure enough, these same people who said no came knocking on his door wanting to do business with him. And he would turn to his team and say, what did I tell you? They just meant not now. So for those of you who are um, wondering why it's always looking like no, 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 and nothing's happening, it just means not now. Some of those very same people that you're trying to get before may not have what you need right now, but later on they might. So think along those lines. In the meantime, hey, encourage yourself. Pat yourself on the back. When you finish a book, or when you finish posting a YouTube video or completing a dress that you sewed on your sewing machine or launched an online training course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, throw your own party. You might be uh, hearing crickets right now, but if you stick it out and continue to build, they will come. Okay, that's about it for now. But I just wanted to throw those, uh, hopefully those words of encouragement to you. So um, can you do me a big favor? In this noisy, cluttered world, (laughs) if you think that this podcast might be giving you a few nuggets um, that are helping you there, go ahead and log on to www.wohwfactorbusinesspodcast.com forward slash get connected. And subscribe to the show. And the last thing I'd like to ask you to do in this very cluttered world (laughs) is when you see our Facebook uh, page, our Facebook emblem there, or Twitter emblem, go ahead and and like those pages too. That would be um, of great support and help and encourage me as I go along on this journey. So thank you in advance, and I will be talking to you soon. Goodbye for now.